Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Ross. Today, we're going to talk about the timer function. No, I don't mean the on timer event. I mean the timer function. Didn't know it was there. Yeah, it's in there. And if your access database is running slow, maybe you click a button and it runs a bunch of events, right? You got some queries and stuff going on in there, some code, some loops, but you're not sure why it's so slow. Well, in this video, I'm going to teach you how to drill down inside those events and find out what's running slow. And we'll use the timer function to do it, which will let us get millisecond precision on those calculations. Now, this is going to be a developer level video. What does that mean? If you don't know VBA and you want to learn it, go watch my intro to VBA video first. It's about 20 minutes long. It teaches you everything you need to know to get started with VBA in about 20 minutes. You should know what variables are. You should watch my video on data types. We're going to use the format function. We're going to use the sleep function just to simulate an event that takes forever because I'm not going to actually make an event that takes three seconds to run. So we'll simulate that with the sleep function. We're going to use the date diff function to figure out the difference between two date fields in seconds. And we're going to display our results in my status box. So go watch the status box video. These are all free videos. They're on my YouTube channel. They're on my website. Go watch them. Come on back. All right. So here I am in my tech help free template. This is a free database. You can grab off my website if you want to, but you can use pretty much any database you want. Now, I recently had a problem in my own database where, for example, when I open up my customer form, I got a lot more information on there. Every time it goes to a new customer using the on current event, several things happen. For example, it checks to see if there's any emails that this customer sent me that I have to answer because they all come into my database. So it'll put a little red box around the email button and I can click on the email button and go answer their email, right? It also checks and displays their membership level because that's not a field on the customer form. It looks to their orders, right? If they've purchased a silver membership, it'll show up in their orders. So I want that to display here too. Do they have any unpaid orders, right? They didn't pay their membership fees last month. I kind of want to know about it when I'm answering their email. Anyway, it doesn't happen that much. Anyways, when my on current event runs or when it did before, it took about four to five seconds, which that doesn't seem like a lot of time. But, you know, when you use this form all day long, waiting four seconds every time this form loads, you know, if you go through 100 records in a day, and you can shave a half the time off of that, you know, each one's taking four seconds, you know, you're saving yourself a couple minutes there. So especially if this, if this is something that's running in a loop, right? If you've got a loop that's running maybe through record sets or whatever, and you've got to run through 10,000 records, if you could get that loop down, you know, 20% of what it was before, even 50% of what it was before, it's going to run a lot faster. So the whole point of this is to optimize your database, right? To, to drill down and to figure out, today we're going to figure out what's taking so long. And then over the next week or two, I'm going to teach you some other ways we can optimize stuff. Okay, so today we're just going to figure out, we're going to do some, some, some sleuthing today, some troubleshooting. So first, I'm going to make this button run three different subroutines. And, you know, they'll do three of whatever things. It doesn't matter. But we're going to simulate some other stuff happening with the sleep timer. So let's go into this button here. All right, we can get rid of this stuff here, clean things up. We don't need these buttons. Okay, so instead of hello world, I'm going to say in here, I just want to do three things. Run sub one, sub two, and sub three. All right, what are these? Well, let's make them. All right, private, sub, sub one. And this is literally just going to do some stuff. Let's say status, sub one is running. Maybe there's, you know, it's looking up some stuff. Maybe it's running an action query. Maybe it's doing whatever. Who cares? Okay, so that's doing some stuff. Sub two, sub three. Okay, in fact, let me just uh, change this real quick. We'll make that sub two. And that'll be sub three. And there we go. Okay, so we made three subs. Sub one, sub two, sub three. Save it. Let's come back out here and run it. Just make sure it works. Close it. Open it. Click. Boom. All right. Sub one, sub two, sub three. And of course, status box works backwards. Okay, now let's simulate... These guys take in different amounts of time to run the query it's running or the code that it's executing or whatever, the report it's generating. So this one, let's say sleep 1300. This is taking 1.3 seconds to run, right? Those are milliseconds. Okay. Sleep 
uh, 2,500. This guy takes two and a half seconds. That's a slow one. And this guy sleep uh, uh, 200, 200 milliseconds. Okay? Now, we don't know that. We just were putting that in there for to, to simulate it. All right, click the button. And you can see how now they're taking a little bit longer to run. Right? And I want to know which one. In fact, let's do this too. Let's, uh, when this starts, let's status box equals blank. Let's clear the status box. And then when we're done, we'll say um, status done. And then beep. Okay? All right, one more time. There we go. It's doing its thing. It's doing its thing. Okay. Now, I want to know how long each one of those is taking. What I'm going to do is I'd come into my code here and, and try to figure out, okay, which one of you guys is taking the longest? Now, we could just use a date time field. Date time fields work fine. You can use them to track how long things run. They only give you times to the second, though. And if you got stuff that's running really long, you know, five seconds, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, okay, that'll work. So let me show you how that would look first. All right. We would dim a T start as a date value. Okay, and then here I would say, before sub one runs, I'd say T start equals now. And then after it's done, I'd say something like status time to run. And, and then we'll just do a simple date diff, right? Date diff seconds from T start to now. And seconds, right? So this will take the difference in seconds between when that loop started and right now, when this code executes here. All right, and now we'll just copy this, right, to each of the other subs. So sub two and sub three, and then we'll just do time to run. Basically the same thing, right? That, because we're resetting T start each time, right? Show me this, do that one, show me this, do that one, show me this, do that one, okay, all right. Save it. Debug compile once in a while. Come back over here and let's run it again. And now, okay, we can see that took one second. All right, that took three seconds. It's it's rounding it to the nearest second because right? the second is as, as granular as you can get. And that one was zero seconds. Not really a zero, but okay. Now, that's not too bad. And if you've got stuff that's taken a long time to run, I've had some buttons before take, you know, 30 seconds to run. And you can go through, you know, line by line in your code and figure out which commands are taking longer. But if you want a little more precision than that, we can use timer, the timer function. All right, so let's adjust our code accordingly. Now, T start, instead, we're going to call it a double. Okay, timer returns the number of seconds since midnight. So it can be up to like 80,000 something. We'll talk more about the specific details of timer in just a few minutes but it's gonna be a floating point number, so it's gonna have a fractional component, so we're gonna store it in a double, right? Remember, I pretty much always use long integer or double, unless I'm really, really, really trying to optimize my data. Technically, this returns a single, but we're not gonna worry about that. It's floating point number, use double, okay? Now, T start equals timer, okay? Yeah, it's a function, you could do that, but you don't need to, okay? Now, time to run is just going to be here. We're not going to use date diff at all because it's not a date value anymore. It's just going to be timer minus T start. Okay, because right here, T start is going to get set equal to time. I'm just going to get rid of these because it's confusing. All right, T start gets set equal to the timer at that second. All right, the sub runs. And now here we're going to say, give me the time to run, whatever the timer is now, minus that start time. Okay, you with me? Same thing we did before, except instead of using now, we're just using timer, which is a number of seconds. All right, so put timer here. And we're going to put timer here. And we're going to replace that date diff with this. All right, so this guy goes there. And it goes there. Same thing. All right, save it. Debug compile once in a while. Come back out. Meow, and click the button. And ooh, look at that. Eh, ain't that pretty cool? Now, this is much, much closer to what our actual values are, right? 1.32, it's gonna be slightly different because there is some processing overhead involved, even in my status function. We're talking fractions of a second though, all right? But now I can at least I can tell that query took 1.3 seconds to run. Uh, this uh, record set loop took 2.5 seconds. This guy took 0.2 seconds. 
So now I can say, well, this is the longest part of that event, right? Of whatever's in this event. This guy, this sub two is the longest running thing. Let's go into sub two now and figure out what we can do to make this run faster. Oh, we've got a D count in there when all we really want is to know if that table has a record in it. Well, we should be using uh, D lookup instead. Or next week, I'm going to show you something called my D lookup, which is a faster D lookup that I wrote. That's coming. OK, so we'll talk about optimizing more later. But for now, we just want to dis discover what's causing the slowdown. And now we've pinpointed it to sub two. OK, I did this just the other day in one of my like I said, the uh, the on current event. And I, sh I shaved it off from like I think it was like eight seconds at the longest because, you know, it's not always going to run exactly the same. Certain customers might run longer or shorter depending on how many orders they have or how many emails they have in the system. So it's not exact, but I ran it on a loop and I, I, I shaved a lot of time. I, I, I cut the event time in half. I think I brought it from eight seconds down to four seconds. So that was pretty good. All right, so let's talk more about the timer. It is a reserved word. It's technically a function. That means don't use timer as a field name. Right, I've you know don't use name as a field name, that kind of stuff. Wait, oh, someone's beaming in. Hold on. All right, my man Alex has a page on my website with all the reserved words on it. I'll put a link down below if you want to check that out. I've actually got a video on that I've been working on, so I'm gonna do a video too. But Alex's page is pretty comprehensive. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, this is not the same as the on timer event. The on timer event can run after a form has been open for so many seconds or every so. So a number of seconds, milliseconds, technically. All right, timer returns a number of seconds since midnight. So there's the value, 0 to 86400. Zero, zero. It returns a single, but you can store it in a double, uh, with millisecond-ish precision. Because I know someone in the comments is going to call me out on it. It's not exactly milliseconds. It's technically 1 64th of a second, or about 15.6 milliseconds. So it's not technically millisecond precision, but it's close enough for anything practical that you're going to do in an access database. OK. And yes, again, it's still a floating point number. So rounding errors are theoretically possible. But again, it's negligible for practical use. Whatever you're going to use this for in access, it's close enough. You're not building a, a Mars orbiter here. Now, if your event does roll over midnight, you have to account for that, right? Because it's going to go from 86400 to zero. So there's some code there. You can use that again. Use timer for things that are very, very fast, very, very quick. All right. If you got something running and you think it might possibly run over midnight, then you have to account for it. Here's some other uses for timer. I, I racked my brain trying to think of some things. I even asked chat GPT. I'm like, can you think of any other uses for timer? Detecting idle time, uh, maybe pausing code execution briefly. Again, you can use sleep for that. Um, game logic. If you're building a game in access, I want to see it. I really want to see screenshots of it, post them in my forums. Uh, those are great. I actually have some other game ideas. I want to, we did a hangman a while back, but I got like some like choose your own adventure and dungeon crawl type stuff. I want to do in access. That's one of those things. That's like a, a, a side project, but anyways, um, smoothing animation for UI delayed chat GPT came up with that. I, I don't, I don't see how you'd use that. Um, for most of these seconds, I think most of these instances here, I think seconds are just fine. Like if you really want to detect idle time on a form, you don't care if a user has been idle for 0.4 seconds. You care if he's been idle for 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 90 minutes, that kind of stuff. So you, you can just use a date field for that. But uh, there you go. There's timer. Um, honestly, this is one of those things, one of those functions that I almost never use but it's nice to have in your toolbox because I did have to pull it out the other day when I was like, why is this form loading so slow? Why is this customer form running so slow when I move from record to record? It shouldn't be. And I figured out why it was. I had some inefficiencies in there. I've been building my database, my 599 CD database uh, for over the past 20 years. It's the same database file that I started my company with. And I've just been adding on to it and making changes. And I haven't done a real like full redesign ever. I just keep putting new stuff in it. I'm like the mechanic that drives the old car, right? I'm just, I keep putting new parts in it and changing out this. And so it does get optimized and it works well. But uh, yeah, this, this here is a beast. This is a great function for analyzing your database's speed. And again, we'll be talking more about other things you can do 
to optimize it once you figure out where the problems are. We'll talk about those in upcoming videos, but that is gonna do it for today, folks. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I will see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.